Hello crafters! Today we're going to make this adorable little mouse trivet slash pot holder. So you're going to need 100% cotton yarn and don't care which kind of yarn you use. I use the sugar and cream but you can use any kind of 100% cotton and I have three colors that we'll need for this cute little mouse which is gray, pink, and black. I'm showing you a lighter, this is a light pink. If you prefer to use this lighter pink, you can do so, but I'm gonna use these three. <clears throat> and the crochet size that I'm using is a five US. So whatever yours is equivalent to that. Um, it is important, depending on how big you want your pot holder, to use the right uh, crochet hook. However, if you want it to be large, um, you can use a larger cro crochet hook and that'll be fine. So let's get started. <clears throat> this is going to be a very easy project for you. So what you want to do is start with your gray. And as you can see, I've already made quite a few <laughs> pot holders with this. And you want to go ahead and uh, hopefully you know how to get your yarn onto your crochet hook slip stitch it on there and what you're going to do is you're going to chain four one two three four so just a reminder putting your your yarn onto your hook is not considered a stitch so if you have four you're going to go ahead and work in a single crochet so we're going to put one single crochet into the first stitch, a single crochet into the second stitch, and a single crochet into the third. Now, this is something where you begin, this is called a tail, and your yarn tail for this can either be cut or um, after you've worked it back in. So what I usually do is I grab it now and we're going to chain one as we turn our work. So I'm going to grab it and I'm going to include this tail as part of just a single strand. So I'm including the tail, I'm grabbing it and I'm chaining one. So you can see you've kind of worked that into your work. As you turn around, you should have, <clears throat> after you chain, you're not going to work into the chain that your hook is in, you're going to work into the next one. And you're going to chain you're going to put two singles into that one so we're going to put one single again i'm still grabbing my so i've worked my tail back in beautifully and i'm going to put another one in that same stitch so what we did is we in that stitch we worked our two stitches into that and we worked our tail into it now the next stitch we're going to put two into the next stitch two into the neck. I mean, one in, of course, it should be a total of two. And then that last stitch, make sure you pick up that loop at the end there, because sometimes that's hard to see. See that? Don't, don't miss it or it's gonna look funny. So one stitch in there and then another stitch in there. So at the end, we're gonna chain one, but before I chain one, I wanna show you Count your stitches. You should have one, two, three, four, five, six. <clears throat> if you don't have six, then there's a problem. Go back and start again. Go ahead and chain one. And just so you know, every time we turn making our mouse, we're always going to chain one. That's the rule of thumb. And in these next stitches, you're gonna count a single crochet in each stitch, one, two, three, four, five, and make sure you get both, both the front and the back loop, or it's gonna look funny, six. So you can see <clears throat> it's already starting to kind of form your, your mouse. So go ahead and chain one and what we're going to do 
is we're going to add two single crochets in this first stitch. So I'm going to do one and two. And as you go across, the next one's going to be a single crochet, a single crochet, a single crochet, a single crochet. And when you get to the very last stitch, you're going to do two in that stitch. And make sure you're picking up, again, the back and the front loop with the stitch. So otherwise, you'll have a problem. So... When you get to the end, if you want to count your stitches, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you went from six to eight. I believe that's how that works. One, two, three, except for the one your chain is in. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight. Yeah. So you're going to, we're not counting the one that the chain is in. We're going to go ahead and <clears throat> chain one. And then we're just going to do a single crochet all the way across. So I'm going to meet you at the other side. And I'm going to stay with you for this whole project. So you don't have to worry about pausing this or you're going to, you don't have to worry about counting on your own or anything. We're just going to just do it together. You can learn how to crochet. Okay, so you can see that this is going to be right here. We're going to put together this cute little mouse um, pink nose when we get to the end. But right now we're building the body. So go ahead and chain one. And now the next row, we're just going to go again. We're going to go all the way across. Building our mouse. Again, using 100% cotton, and the reason that we do that is so that when you pick up a pot holder, you don't end up with a burn mark. If you have poly or another type of, you know, lycra or um, nylon, it was, it's going to show um, acrylic. It will show a burn mark. So once you're across that next row, you're going to chain one again. And in this next one, in the first loop, you're going to put two single crochets. And as you can see, the, the methodology for the single crochet, now we're going to go single, just one single crochet in each one across. The methodology is that you're building on these single crochets, so you're expanding your mouse as you're going. So you're increasing on the sides as you go across in small increases. And again, when you get to the end, make sure you do two in the very last one, grabbing both the front and the back. So you have a front and back loop. So make sure you're grabbing both and do a chain one. So your mouse should be looking, that should be, that's like the, the start of the face right here, you can see on mine. <clears throat> and we're gonna go ahead and work a single crochet into each one back across, building on this mouse. And if you can kind of see, we're working a, just a single crochet row while we're adding those double crochets at the end. And the reason that you do that is because if you start doing too many uh, double crochet, I mean, not a double crochet, I'm sorry, too many singles into one one loop what happens is it it makes gaps so you want to make sure that as you expand you're expanding slowly so you can see that looks really nice chain one and what we're going to do is add two more one two in the first loop and then just a single crochet in the next single crochet in the next, single crochet in the next. All right, when we get to the end, don't forget that last loop, what are we gonna do? 
we're going to add two. So make sure again you're picking up the back and the front loop. One and two. And you're building that mouse's fat little body. So he'll have a nice fat little round body in a minute. So chain one and a single crochet across, single crochet in the next, and in the next. Make sure, again, you're picking up your back and front loop of your stitches. And this is called um, an amigurumi style. And single crochets like this, adding or subtracting, you can do this with animals and different projects once you learn how to do the amigurumi. Okay. So that's starting to look pretty darn good. <clears throat> Chain one. And this time we're just going to do a single crochet across again. We're not going to add anything funny or, you know, stitches. We're just going to do the single crochet across. So we're doing two rows of that now. Should be starting. This is kind of like his little belly. And you can use a you know other colors if you like a darker gray or you like like a black or a soft mixed gray, you can do that too. This is just my color of choice. So now that's kind of like the mouse. And we're probably going to, if you wanted to, you could do another row of increasing. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to start now on a chain one. Again, that we always do that. And we're going to decrease a stitch. And that's going to create his body around in a loop. So as you decrease the stitch, you go through the first one and you pull the yarn through. You go through the second loop, you pull the yarn through, and then you wrap it around and you pull it through. And that's how you decrease a stitch. You're only doing that in the first two. You Now you've just decreased, and now you're doing a single crochet, crochet all the way across. Just follow me. And if you bought a little skein of yarn, you probably can end up with like four or five of these out of one. So it's kind of a lot of bang for your buck. So your last two stitches, we're going to do a decrease again. So once you get to those last two, you're going to put it through the front and back loop. Pull it through. And then you're going to take it and put it through the last loop, making sure you get the front and the back loop. Pull it through. So for that decrease, you'll have three, wrap it around and then pull it through the three. And you'll start to see, you've got this cute little bump. It's kind of starting to decrease. So chain one and then do a single crochet all the way across. So I will meet you at the end. This is a really great project to do if you're in scouting. I used to be a Girl Scout um, patrol leader, and then I was kind of an assistant leader, and then I was a Girl Scout leader, and then I was on the board. So I love Girl Scouts. Great project. All right, so as you get across, you've done a single crochet, and you're going to chain one, and as you're coming across, we're going to go ahead and decrease again. So what does that mean? You're going to go through, pick up your yarn, go through the next one, pick up the yarn, wrap it around three. So when then we're just going to do a single crochet until we get to the end. And when you get to the end, make sure you leave your last two um, 
chain, you know, I mean your last two um, stitches so that we can do another decrease. You're going to decrease at the end. So you have two stitches there. You're going to pull it through. And you're going to pull it through. So we're doing a decrease. And you can see how that's starting to really show a decrease. Okay. And then you're going to go ahead and chain one. And what we're going to do is a single crochet all the way across. So let's not forget to do that. Single crochet. And as you've done another single crochet, chain one. And I'd like for you to do just another single crochet two rows of this and as you can see my yarn started to pull apart a little bit you know this is in a race so if you find that your yarn doesn't do exactly what you want it to do just take it apart and start over there's no right or wrong answer it's whatever you feel comfortable with okay so this is going to be our last decrease. So you're going to make sure you chain one. And I always turn my work too, because it, it, it's easier if you turn it every time you do that. But pull through the first, pull through the second. Now you've just done a nice decrease. Then just chain one, chain one in the next one, chain one. And when you get to your last two, okay, your last two, you want to do your decrease. And by now you're getting to be an expert at that. All right, chain one. So this is where we're going to make the little tail for your mouse. And it's also the hook for your pot holder. So go ahead and do one single crochet, one single crochet, one single crochet and now you're in the middle and you're going to do chains one two three four five six seven eight nine ten now I'm probably going to do twelve eleven twelve if you want it to hang more this is going to be the tail but if you wanted to hang more, you could go ahead and um, create a longer. You could put like 15 chains. You can do 20. However, I think that 10 to 12 is a good number. So you're going to bring, after you do those chains, you're going to bring it back around to your next stitch. And you're just going to do a single crochet. And then when you do that single crochet, it just leaves that loop there. And then you have one more single crochet and another single crochet. So here's what we're going to do. If you notice on this mouse, you have this nice finished edge here. And the way you get that nice finished edge and it actually expands your mouse is you're going to work on the side of the mouse and you're going to do a single crochet into each stitch. Now I know that's hard to see. Um, so what you can do is just find your rhythm on each row. So this is like row one, you need a stitch and you're going to do a single crochet. Row two, you need a stitch and you're going to do a single crochet. Row three. So you just make it even when you're pulling through the stitches. You see how that works? You're making it even as you go down the side. And you just want to make sure you're working one stitch into each row. Otherwise, you might end up with some gapping. Okay, that I did that so tight, I'm having a hard time. And if you're a newcomer to crocheting, 
this actually took me, don't feel bad, this took me a little bit of uh, time to learn how to work down the side like this. Because you're used to seeing stitches in a certain way. And then when you start working down the side, you're going, I, I don't, I don't know how to do that. So when you get to the bottom, you've got those stitches and you're kind of pulling, when you're doing this, you're kind of pulling it together and it's making more of a point for his cute little nose. And I have to really work those stitches in there because I did some tight stitches. So see the bottom there, how I made, I came across and I made that cute little point and I came up. And again, I saw people do this, not this particular pattern, but I saw the first time I saw somebody working up the sides, I was like, it was on a sweater and I was like, oh my God, how is she doing that? And it just takes practice. So if you're not perfect at it, don't even worry about it. And forget about it means forget about it. Oh, I don't like the way that looks. See? So I even, I am guilty of not making a perfect stitch up the side. So you're doing singles all the way around, working up the side, folks. Working it back to your single 12. And when you get to your single 12, you want to put, again, in each one of these, a little single crochet. So I'm working up the 12. And... All that's doing really is making a nice reinforced hook. It's the tail, but it's also making a nice reinforced hook so you can hang it and it's not flimsy. I don't like a, just a single row because it's just too flimsy if you're hanging it on a wall or you're hanging it on a hook near your stove so you can use it. We want to make this practical and not just a cute little trivet. So work down your 12 stitches, and when you work down your 12 stitches, it should look something like that. And the last thing, if you notice, now that I've worked this, this is nice and smooth. So I have to kind of single stitch this into here, not single stitch it, slip stitch it rather, so that it looks even. So if you can tell, We've slip stitched this so this mouse looks so cute. So what you want to do is you want to cut off, and if you didn't get your scissors, make sure you have your scissors. You want to cut off with a, you know, a scissor you use for material, not just an everyday scissor because it won't cut, it'll fray. So once you've done that and you've pulled this through, make sure you get out your, um, plastic needle. Now, if you don't like using plastic needles, that's fine. You can use a crochet um, metal needle. The problem with me is that my hands are so beat up, and if I use a pl uh, metal needle, it always pinches me. So for this purpose, you're going to thread the needle, and you're going to work the gray back into your work. And you're going to work, work the stitch in three different directions so that the stitch will never come out. If you work it in the same direction all the time, your stitch may fray. And then whoever's washing the pot holder will go, I am not happy with this pot holder you did for me because the stitch is fraying. So you want somebody to be really happy with your work, especially if you're planning on selling it. Okay, I think that is a, a wrap. And for me, I'm very much of a perfectionist, so I just like to do something like a double secure stitch. 
So that's my mouse. And what you're going to do now with that cute little mouse is you're going to, and again, if you wanted your tail to be longer, you could, you could add, you know, 15 or 18 stitches in there. I'm going to use this darker color pink, but again, if you want to use a lighter color pink, you certainly can do that. And literally, um, well, we could sew the nose first, but sewing is going to be an altogether different animal. So let me just show you how to make the ears. You're going to slip stitch. You're using the same size needle. Slip stitch on and count four, just like you did when you got started with the gray. Two, three, four. Now, just so you know, and you probably all know this because if you're crocheting a lot, this stitch that is actually running in your crochet needle is not going to end up being a stitch. So even though you counted four, you're going to end up with three. So we're going to single crochet back into one, two, and then you have three. And I'm going to work my tail back into it. Now, if you can't if you can't work your tail and and you're new to this, don't worry about it. Just cut it off or you know, do something else with it. When you get to the end of your 3, chain 1. Now, you should have 3 fully developed stitches that you've done here. In the first stitch, you're going to put 3 single crochets. 1 two, three. And then in your second stitch, you're gonna put three single crochets. So let's do it again. One, two, three. And in your third stitch, making sure you're picking up the back and the front loop, you're gonna do three, one, so you've got three single crochets going into that, okay? And then what you're going to do is you're going to bring it back around where you started and you're going to slip stitch it. I'm going to try to pick up that last little end that I, I may have to just cut that. So. When you slip stitch it, you have a little tiny mouse ear. Leave yourself a long tail because what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and work that in and sew it. So I worked my tail back in, so I've got a little piece of straggly beginner tail hair. And that last one, we need this long tail because you can mark it too if you want to, but you want to kind of bring it up one, two, three, four, five, you know, up, up to about right here. And you can kind of, when you put that in, you can kind of see how that's going to look. And you want to go ahead and do two of those, okay? And we're going to sew them in. I'm just going to do one more with you, and if you want to you know, pause this and skip, but I'm going to do one more ear. So we're going to do one, two, three, four, the fourth one not counting, and then I'm going to work one single all the way across. No, I'm not going to work one single all the way across. Silly me, I'm going to put three in each one. So you did four, and then you're going to do one, two, three, However you do the ears, just make sure you're consistent with the same design. But I just made up this design and I 
I think what I did on the first year is I went across with a single. I should be pausing this. Starting over with my second ear. Sorry, folks. So we're going to do one, two, three, four. A single across. One, two, three. Working my tail back in. That's what I did for the design. And then I did a chain. And then when I turned it, we have three finished stitches, like I just said. And we're going to do three in the first stitch, three in the second stitch, and then three in the last one. And then we're going to slip stitch it. And by the way, I know I might sound like I'm a little bit scattered, but I just designed this pattern myself today. And I was so excited about how it turned out. And I thought it was so cute. And I said, I have to share this with the world. So pardon me if I'm not doing it quite as lovely as I should with a little bit more. So I left a little bit on that one. So there you go, folks. I worked my tail back into that, except for a little piece. And I have the cutest little ears. So again, if you wanna try to like put a little pin or a little stitch marker or something where you want those to go, that's fine. I'm gonna put them right here. And then I'm just going to grab a piece of yarn to do the nose. And then I'm going to grab the black to do the eyes. You don't need a lot of black. And if, and I'll give you a hint. If you don't have the black in cotton, it's okay. Just use a little acrylic because it's not a big piece in your project. So you can improvise that way. So the end of your you can make the 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 um the tip of the nose as big or as small as you want i usually start in the front and the back loop i come through and i hold it with my fingers because what happens is you have to hold that and then what i do is i hold it across and i work it back into my work so that as i'm going across that's going to be worked right in as part of that nose so you have just work it around a couple of those stitches and this is something if you're if you're not used to sewing it can be quite a traumatic learning experience because you have to kind of be a seamstress almost to get this done Okay, so I made a cute, cute little pink nose and I'm looking at it and I'm going, that's not big enough. So I'm just going to put it back through where I came from and make it really pronounced because I like to look at a really pronounced mouse. And as I'm coming through, I'm going to loop it through here to give it extra security. And that's, as you know, if you sew, people who so know what I'm talking about. So I think that's a cute little nose. And I'm going to go ahead and, well, you know what? I can't cut that unless I work it through like this. Because you know what will happen? It will invariably unravel. So make sure you, again, like I told you, work it three different ways so that it's so secure that if you throw it into the wash, it's not going to I bought a couple of afghans at a yard sale once and when I washed them they came so unraveled and now I know why because somebody didn't do their 
work their stitches back in. There's the nose. So cute. Now let's do something. Let's go ahead and put the eyes on last and let's put the ears on. So I'm going to count up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to count up one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to count up seven and I'm going to count one, two across. And I'm going to go ahead and put the end of that tail from my mouse ear. And I'm going to pick up just the front loop on the gray. And I'll tell you, I'm going to give you a secret why you do that. And then I'm going to sew it back through the front of the ear so that the ear is right here. And I'm going to tell you why I do that. See on the back? you A, a good crocheter does not have all kinds of stuff hanging along the back. And you don't want to do that. If you do that, it doesn't look finished. It doesn't look professional. So I know it happens. And if you're new to crocheting, it happens. So just sew that ear on using those front, picking that front loop that you just picked, whatever front loop that you picked and count it in and make sure you know where you count it in because we want to do a consecutive look on the other side. And once you've got that in, see how I got that in? Now I can lay that down like that so that someone can use it as a trivet, or you can, for decoration, you can put it up, but either way, I just love this little design. Okay, so I'm gonna work my yarn. Remember what I said, you work your yarn in three different ways so that when you wash it, or you sell it, or whatever you're going to do with it, it doesn't come apart. Because you don't want it coming apart. And I do mine extra. I know I do it probably more than I should. I do it twice over so that it doesn't ravel. Oh, I almost cut the ear off. Almost cut my ear off, folks. That's ear number one. All right. Now, when you're doing ear number two, make sure you go across. And if you counted, I counted three in, so I'm going to go one, two. I want to make sure that I'm grabbing basically the same stitch that I grabbed with the other one so that when you're, you know, sewing your ear in, it matches and it's not a perfect science so if you don't do it perfectly it's okay I tend to be kind of a perfectionist when it comes to sewing these things but all right so I sewed mine in again just pulling from the front of the loop see those ears are looking so fantastic And the other thing is you want to grab that gray thread maybe in a couple of different places when you're going through. And the reason for that is so that your ears are secure. If you do not do that, um, then the other thing is your ear could be floppy moppy. And at some point in the future, when someone's using a pot holder or a trivet, they might end up with an ear in their, you know, pot of soup. So we don't want that to happen. Okay, so secure it back and forth one way, two ways. Just remember three ways to thread your yarn. Three different ways. Okay, that looks good. All right, that's my ears. So we're going to do some really fun eyes. And I like to make my eyes kind of big. So when you use your yarn for your eyes, double it. Just like you do when you're sewing. So I'm going to show you something. Take your yarn and double it so you've got some bug eyes. And your eyes, might mice have really eyes that are really close together. So when you're bringing it up, one, two, three, four, five right in here 
I'm going to take the top loops and for purposes of the eyes, I'm going to tie it to get started and I, I'm going to cut those off afterwards. So I'm going to work back and forth through the top of the loops, maybe four times doubled because it really helps. One, two, and I'm going to work it this way so that it stays. I'm just working it back and forth so that the eyes won't come loose. It's not always an exact science. Okay, I have a nice tight eye there. Tuck that under. That's eye number one. Eye number one is done. Yay! So I'm just going to use the exact thread again. And I'm just going to count over one, two, three. I'm going to try to get it in the exact same place that I started with that one. And they've got to be close together. So when you're working your eyes, make sure they're, you know, close together. I don't know if you saw what I did, but I tied that and I kind of worked through it to make it look like a 3D eye. And it's not an it's it's not an exact science. No, I just don't like the way that looks. The other one came out much better. Okay. Not happy with that. So we're gonna go we're gonna do it a third time in there. Still not ha that happy with that eye. So let me cut off these stragglers and see what I can do make that eye a little more like the other one. I think I'm going to pull it through this gray loop one more time. Now I'm happy with it. So I'm going to work my stitches. I'm basically not trying to create the eye anymore. I'm just trying to work my needle through to tighten it. So that it doesn't pull out. Again, we don't want an eye in somebody's pot of soup. Okay. I think that's tight. Okay. Probably couldn't see me cut that because I was off the camera, but so if you are happy with that, I'm happy. Thanks for joining me, and please be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'll try to bring you fun, new, and creative things that I make. And you can also visit me at Lori's Handiwork on Etsy. Thank you.